Hello everyone, this is Polyhertz, and in this video we'll be taking a look at how to remove a model's chamfers using Unchamfer Pro. In 3D Studio Max, when you want to taper or round off specific parts of a model, probably the first tool or modifier you're going to end up using is chamfer. But if you're using it to directly round out parts of your mesh, you'll quickly run into one big problem. Once the chamfer is applied, there's no good way to revert the chamfered edges back to their original shape. Unchamfer Pro aims to solve this problem. So let's take a look at what it can do. We'll start off by selecting a few edges on this simple cube mesh, performing a chamfer on them. And now we have a nice rounded off shape. Now, in order to remove this chamfer, we have to understand that unchamfer is basically an advanced version of collapse. So in order to use it, the first thing we need to do is select the edges we want collapsed. If we were to use the regular collapse tool here, you can see we get back our original topology but the vertices are in the wrong positions. If, however, we were to use Unchamfer, it collapses them, puts the vertices in the right position, and selects the edges that were used to make the chamfer in the first place. Okay, let's take a look at a different topology. Okay, so we've got a few different types of chamfers that have been applied here. Uh, we have chamfers that have edges on only one side. We have chamfers that have uh, split into triangles. And uh, we have chamfers that end in cubes or squares, I suppose. So let's select a few of them. Now, one thing you have to understand is that when you are collapsing these edges, you want to select all of the edges that are being collapsed. So we would select all of these here and select all of these here and then run chamfer and boom, we have just gotten back our original topology and uh, put the vertices in the correct position and again, selected the edges that were used to create the chamfer in the first place. It didn't have any problems even when there was uh, an edge only on one side also. Here we have a simple one. Yeah. Up here we have again uh, only edges on one side. No problem and in these triangles down here. Okay, so that's all pretty easy to understand, I think. Now, what are all these options? We obviously have quite a few options in this user interface and we haven't touched any of them. Uh, first off, we have interactive mode. If we turn that on, instead of collapsing the selected edges automatically, we actually can scale the selected chamfer towards its collapse point or away from it. So if we select that, oh, turn that on, and we drag the cursor down, we can shrink the chamfer, or moving it up, we can grow the chamfer. Also, if we hold control, we can speed up the process so that uh, you don't have to drag the cursor as much or hold shift to scale it in increments. All right. Um, also, before we move on to these other vector modes, I should point out that so far we've been doing everything in automatic mode. And that means that it figures out where each one of these selected edge groups is going to collapse to automatically. But any sort of automatic system can potentially 
uh, run into problems and you need control over those uh, control over what it does so that you can solve those problems so down here we can see a whole bunch of different topologies that can be created by chamfer and these are all variations on these three squares they are just different chamfer settings and if we select the affected geometry and collapse it everything works fine but if we were to go over to these we can see that there's actually a problem with them the inner parts that are chamfered are fine but in the process of performing the chamfer we've distorted some of the surrounding edges so if we have those selected and we run on chamfer we get back our original geometry but this edge this uh, group of edges is still bending downward if we want to correct that inaccuracy that chamfer created we can go down to automatic vectors and turn outer edge priority to none then when we unchamfer it will straighten those out for us okay let's go back to this model here and the next mode we're going to look at is loop ends now loop ends is the easiest one to understand but it's also the most limited in its functionality so with loop ends selected in order to collapse the selected edges we need to select one more edge at the top and bottom of each loop so we'd select these and these run on chamfer and we get uh, the expected result so now what it's doing here is it's using the first and last edges as the vectors uh, and for those that don't know a vector is basically just a line uh, and what unchamfer pro is doing is saying if we took these two lines and we scaled them infinitely where would they be closest to each other so if we come down to preview here turn on vectors we can see what's being used scale them up and as you can see they're intersecting right here so that's where they're going to be collapsing to we need to know this because the next mode we're going to look at custom uses this understanding heavily you really need to understand how vectors work otherwise custom doesn't make any sense uh, so if we go down here and we were to say we want to collapse this edge right here or this uh, group of edges right here well in order to do that we need a series of two vectors automatic gets those for us automatically loop ends requires an edge on both sides so it wouldn't actually work here since you've only got an edge on one side and just a blank area here um, so what we would do is we'd select one of them say get vector uh, turn on previews okay and for this part up here we could select these two vertices get vector and now we have the two vectors alternatively we could select a single edge and make that the vector or select two edges that share a vertice get vector and now we have the average direction between those two selected edges uh yeah so select these again press collapse and they collapse there now what if the vectors don't align like say for instance we chose to use this as a vector and we used this as a vector and we scaled them up well they're not intersecting anywhere but we don't care where they intersect we just care where they're closest to each other so if we turn on intersection and intersect is set at vector a what we're actually saying is where is vector a closest to vector b 
and that's where we're going to collapse to. If we set it to B, then where on vector B is it closest to vector A? And then average is just the average between those two. So select these, on chamfer, they move to average. Vector A, on chamfer, they move there. And B, on chamfer, they move there. All right, I think that pretty much covers it. So if this script looks useful to you, you can grab it down in the link in the description below. Have a great day. Bye.